Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So let's begin with our topic for today related to the sacrum. And the topic is the vegetal world. And of course, what we are going to talk about is what is the vegetal consciousness. I guess that you have seen in the post that it turned out to be a very botanic point of view of the information today. So what is the vegetal consciousness and why we have to incorporate that in our own? The first thing that we have to understand from the vegetal consciousness is what vegetals are given to us, which are two main things. And bread. So these are two things that we gain from the plants, from the vegetal kingdom. All the living beings need food to survive, to exist, and every living being needs to breathe in order to survive. We usually say that we all need the vegetal kingdom in order to uh, survive. We need stuff from them. But actually, let's change the thought. Let's change the point of view of this sentence. It's not that they have stuff for us to leave. So, um, so we need from them in order to, to leave. But the thought would be that we exist because they just had so many things to give. And it's a different perspective because we, when we see it from our point of view, like, um, like uh, um, we need from the plants in order to survive, the thought is weird because it's like if we were in need of something, so we have to create plants in order to have the bread and the food, but that's not it. The reality is that the plant has had so much abundance that all the things that they just gave away were taken by other beings that became the animals. So it's because of their abundance that we exist. It's not that we need them, it's just that we exist because of them. Hmm? And this is the first thing that we have to acknowledge to understand this importance of the vegetal consciousness. So let's go to the origin of the vegetal kingdom. So what we have to do in order to go to the origin of the vegetal kingdom is to go back in time 4,000 billion years. So remember that at the very beginning of this world, there was nothing on the ground. It was all dry, volcanoes and heat, deserts, and that's it. Um, suddenly, the condensation of the chemicals in the atmosphere started to become rain. And it rained for thousands and even millions of years until it was all full with water, what was called the first oceans. <clears throat> but these oceans were not clean. These oceans had so many chemicals and, and toxins and uh, many um, heavy metals metals uh, that were falling from the sky, so it was not the best environment. So all these chemicals that were falling in the water, they were brought to the top, to the bottom of the oceans, 
um, where many other volcanoes were still um, heating the waters. And all these different chemicals started to mix to one another and they started to fusion. So they kind of like melt to one another. And this, uh, this melting process made that the, that, that the chemicals started to combine to one another in a different way, in a different structure. So suddenly these inorganic structures that created minerals and, and crystals, as I explained yesterday, heavy structures couldn't really um, keep their, their heavy structure and they just started to mix and transform one to another. And the water, the hot water, water allowed that to flow constantly and just becoming minerals. So this fusion, what created is this new state of, um, of chemicals in which it's not anymore inorganic, but it becomes organic. So organic is like an organism that, that starts to flow and move. So what made the, the, these minerals, chemicals organic? It was because of the exchange of electrons. So they started to change, exchange electrons to one another. So that meant they started to um, share um, electricity. They started to share pulses of movement. And this allowed them to share data information constantly between them so they could find better ways to organize in a new structure. So um, 4,000 million billion years ago, what happened is that some of those chemical elements started to create an organic uh, shield that was protecting the other minerals inside that was called a cell. And this first cell is, the, is what we uh, um, call a cyanobactery. I don't know if it's right pronounced, but cyano or cyanobacteria. Bacteria. Cyanobacteria. So what happened is that cyanobacteria is absorbed inside, like eaten by the chloroplast, chloroplast uh, that is their chemical structure that will encode it. What this cyanobacteria has is that it is shaped by uh, a lot of magnesium. And magnesium is organized in a structure that can absorb and capture all the photons in the environment. The magnesium able to capture all the rays of light. And remember that the goal of the cell was to have energy, needs a lot of energy. If it, if it is not taking the energy from, from the other minerals, so it will take it from another source, which was the sun. Magnesium started to administrate all this energy and it started to, to accumulate a lot of energy within a cell. This um, light that is storage by the magnesium, uh, and it's moving around because of the magnesium, reflects inside the chloroplast through the chloro. Chloro is this chemical component, which is part of the chloroplast. And what it happens is that the light accumulated there is reflected in the structure, in the chemical structure of the chloroplast, and the chloro is a chemical structure that when light hits it, it starts to, to, to move in a wavelength of 500 nanometer, nanometers, which is the color green. So we see the light reflecting in that wavelength with the color green. And that's why the pigment of the chloroplast is called chlorophylla. I don't know the name in chlorophyll. Okay, it's a chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is this pigment, which is not real green, but we see it as green because of the reflection of the chloro. And 
the chlorophyll is the is the reason why we see the plants green. Hmm? So it's lots of bells about these uh, botanics things, but anyway, I'm trying to summarize it. So do you remember why the cell needed this light to make a process that we call photosynthesis? What is the process of photosynthesis? Remember, magnesium will accumulate light. This light is called photons in Greek. That's why photosynthesis. So light. And this light will be transformed into energy. But in order to be storage in energy, it needs molecules to be assimilated as one. So that's why a leaf plant will need minerals made of carbon and water, hydrogen and oxygen, and from the air, carbon dioxide. So it will breathe and drink these, these uh, things in order to get the carbon and the hydrogen to much energy. So the result of this will be carbohydrates, which is the one that accumulates the energy. And the oxygen, the three molecules of oxygen, will be to the environment. You don't need them. So in this process of photosynthesis, two important things happen. A huge source of energy was, was storage and a huge amount of oxygen released. So now in this in this all ocean, we start to have millions and billions of new cells that starts to do photosynthesis because they realize that they have much more light from the much more energy from the sun than from any other chemical element that they can find around. These cyanobacteria, bacteria, they start to um, they start to multiplicate, and by for millions of years, they start to make the process. They they keep doing the process of photosynthesis, creating billions of them that we call phytoplankton. What is phytoplankton? Phyto means plant, and plankton means lost, crazy, errant. Why? Because these are plants without root, and they are algae that goes everywhere, and they don't have a goal. They don't have, sorry, they don't have a, um, a place to go. Okay, so they are lost around. So they are brought by the currents of the ocean without any place to go. The crazy thing about the phytoplankton is that they were the first thing that populated the world and they are still populating very much the world. If you check phytoplankton from space in images in, in, in Google, you will find amazing pictures of this phytoplankton from the space that covers huge regions and you can see them like the northern lights from the oceans. So it's amazing uh, how they move and how you can see it. The phytoplankton is very sensitive to temperature. So if ever is a heat in the planet, or like um, global uh, warming, um, Phytoplankton can die in huge, massive amounts. And that's a real problem for everyone. 
So I will explain why. What is the important thing to know about the phytoplankton? That this, these plants here are covering territories in the ocean bigger than any forest and ever any forest. Territories so huge that are bigger than um, bigger than um, the Congo, the Amazon. So they are releasing so much oxygen to the environment. So much oxygen hmm? that um, that all the the oxygen that we breathe is because of them. So without phytoplankton, no oxygen. Hmm? Um, so of course they release two kind of things. Uh, one is O2, which is oxygen, and O3, which is ozone. So um, it's just a bit much more pure, the ozone, than the oxygen. So at the beginning of time, phytoplankton was the only thing around. So that was the beginning of the algae. This huge amount of phytoplankton that are in the world, that was millions of years ago in the world, was creating a huge amount of energy in the, in the environment by the O3 and O2, ozone and oxygen, and a huge amount of energy by the carb carbohydrates that they were accumulating vitamins, minerals, and everything. So it was a lot, huge amount of this. Uh, w when we got the, all this phytoplankton in the environment, suddenly we had a huge amount of energy right there. So some bacteria, they started to find out that they don't have to make photosynthesis to reach this energy because it's, it was already processed here, aside. So that's why some bacteria, they started to eat the phytoplankton to grab this energy from the carbohydrates and vitamins and so on, and also using the energy of the oxygen and, and oxygen and ozone to move, to create impulses to move. So this new bacteria found out that they could push themselves to move with the pulses of the oxygen as they were storing energy in the shape of carbohydrates. So this is how from the phytoplankton, the soil plankton, emerges. Hmm? So the soil plankton starts to move around because they are using the energy that the plants are not using, which is the oxygen. But they are called soil plankton because they also let themselves move with the currents of the ocean to follow where the phytoplankton is going. The phytoplankton allowed the existence of soil plankton because the, of the abundance of its products. And the soil plankton started to need the phytoplankton in order to live. Hmm? So what happened now? Of course, the next. So let's imagine that this is the ocean and this is the bottom ocean. Hmm? That's the coast. So the phytoplankton will be moved by the currents of the ocean, wherever they take. So they start to fill up all the oceans, the space of the ocean. 
suddenly, after all this, what happened was that there was a really big cold. And this really big cold was the glaciation, the biggest glaciation you can imagine. The 90% of the planet was covered on ice. This is related to the quantity of oxygen that was released to the environment. Hmm? What happened when the oceans, when the poles froze, the level of water goes down too. But also this happens. When the ocean went down, a lot of these algae got stuck in some lakes and the ground. So what they found out is that when they were closer to the shore, they got much more light. So they, start, they started to get stuck in the shores so they don't have to go taken by the ocean. So they started to create roots. And of course, they were so many that started to grow up in order to find mm, much more quantity of light. And this starts to create the vegetal kingdom. And of course, the salt plankton also started to follow the plants to the ground and they became the animal kingdom. And all this animal kingdom were following the plants in the research of carbohydrates and oxygen. Hmm? So remember that the why a plant exists is because of exchange of data, of information, because everything started to exist as a cell because the minerals needed to exchange electrons. So it's all about data. So this is why each one of the plants, it's a connector and channeler of energy in order to send data along the environment and cutting a network of data with each one of the roots of the plants that are in the world. So if each plant is creating a network of data and information sharing electrons and energy, this means that in the entire planet, the vegetal kingdom is nerve, the central nerve system of the earth. As I explained yesterday about the minerals that they storage information, well, the plants are sharing information and expanding that data. They are the network of neurons. And we humans, we eat that information. We animals, sorry, we eat that information. So we animals, we eat these carbohydrates and all this information that were meant to become a new neuron. So all the information are in seed and those seeds are meant to be new trees, new plants. So that's why when we eat them, we got all the information to become a new neuron, to create neurons, to exchange much more data, information. And that's how we develop our brains, our pulses, thoughts. So what I was saying is that the plants assimilate the light 
the difference between the plants and the animals is that the plants assimilate the light and we look for the light. We are seeking for light as the plants just become the light. The vegetal and the animal are different because vegetal are autotrophs. I don't know how to say it in English. Autotrophs, okay. Autotrophs, meaning that they find the food inside, within, by themselves. So they eat light, which is within. And in the animal kingdom, we are heterotrophs. Et meaning that we look for something outside, that we look for something different to eat. We don't eat our in, inside ourselves, we don't produce our own food. In the middle, we can find the fungi, where the mushrooms are. And fungi, what is amazing is that we usually think that we are, that they are vegetables, but they are not. They are much more clear to the animal kingdom because they eat different things and they don't make photosynthesis. And the structure of their skin are much more related to the animals than the vegetals. Hmm? Remember that the fungi, they eat organic matter like dead bodies, uh, trunks, other plants, but they don't make photosynthesis. Okay, so we have here an important key. The vegetal kingdom is light. The animal kingdom seek the light. This means that animals, we have been designed through life in order to look for the light, to look for the things the clarity and the world of vegetables they know how to produce the light how to use the light in order to produce the power within themselves so the vegetal consciousness what is trying to teach us is to become a network of light. So when we communicate with the plants, we connect with the plants, we are able to contact with a network of light. We can communicate with the entire network. El mayor ejemplo a seguir es un árbol. So if our major goal as a human is to enlightenment the only master we can follow is a tree to become a tree to become aware of the vegetal consciousness is to be able to recognize ourselves as light, to share that light, which is the wisdom that we have inside, with everybody, not expecting anything in exchange. So, and now I want to clarify this regarding not expecting anything in exchange. Because when humans start to walk the spiritual path, usually when you listen to that sentence, it's like if you don't need anything and you have to give everything away. And it's not that. For a tree to give many things, for the tree to give fruits and seeds without expecting anything, they need a lot of matter, which is water, which is minerals, they storage a lot of things in order to produce something that then they will give to everybody. So it's not about giving without taking, without receiving. 
is about not expecting to receive in the exchange, but you will need things in order to do. So that's important to understand in this spiritual path. Uh, as an example, for example, myself, I am here doing this every day, but um, I give in all this uh, without expecting anything from you. I don't expect uh, anything to change every day that I give something. But the reason why I am here every day giving something for, for everyone is because the members of the RCM Foundation. Without the members in the RCM Foundation, I wouldn't be able to be here every day, 24 hours, do this. So it's because of that energy that I am able to do this every day. So instead of just thanking me, thanks to all the members of the foundation that are allowing me to do this. Otherwise, I, I would have to be doing other things, working on other things. I repeat, to give without expecting anything in exchange, it doesn't mean that you don't have to receive, OK? And regarding the digital consciousness, what better example than start to pay attention to the trees, to look into the, into the plants, learn how they work, and start to imitate what they do. The best advice I, can, I could give you is be a tree. The vibration today is Q. The statement today is, I am the root of the web. <laughs>